Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Brett and I, Millimeter USA here. And today we're going to do something on an auto ordinance 1911. This is the color case hardened full size 1911. And there is the color case hardened auto ordinance 1911. That review is coming up next. All right, guys, this full size auto ordinance 1911 is a very traditional 1911 going back to its original roots. That's the way it looks like to me here. We can prove that the pistol is fully unloaded Nothing going on here Even from the trigger here a very small trigger the sights very minimal Very old-school old military type next to nothing for sights Just right over top just try to line it up even mark US military right here which is kind of different to have a US military marking on this type of a finish for 1911. During this review of this auto ordinance we shot about 250 rounds of Sig Sauer elite performance ammunition and the pistol performed pretty well with just a couple of malfunctions. The ammo is supplied by elite performance ammunition from Sig Sauer. This is their 45 ACP ammo, 230 grain, traveling at 850 feet per second and 369 foot-pounds. Wilson Combat ETM Magazine. Vickers Duty Mag. Stovepipe. Wants to do a double fade. Okay, so we got one in the chamber. The pistol itself is decently machined and fitted and comes in at 39 ounces. So you can see the fitment right back there. It's got a little wiggle to it. Not bad, but a little bit. The beaver tail itself is fit okay. It's very effective in its use. It works perfectly fine. High grip and the hammer goes home. So it works perfectly fine. But it's just a very traditional type 1911 going back to the World War II type 1911s, the original Colts that I might have seen when I first was in the military in uh, 1988 in the Marine Corps. I spent a little bit of time with a very traditional Colt 1911 that kind of reminds me of this, just of course not this finish. But it is different because this is a Series 80 1911, so it has the firing pin block safety, which makes it more safe but not as traditional. And there it is right there. You can see the additional drop safety, the circular one right there. So yeah, I didn't uh, remember it having that. So it does have about every safety feature. Not much of a noise there. When you take it off, you got a little something, but when you put it on, so. I think the bottom line for us is after experiencing so many high-end 1911s, it's hard for us to go back to a more traditional style 1911 that doesn't have the features that, you know, you and I expect to see on a 1911, a modern day style 1911. Well, definitely is. So I think, you know, this is going to appeal to the people that like those styles from back then. I mean, that's what they're going to gravitate to and that's what they're going to be interested in. For ourselves, we're more into the modern day Dan Wesson's. Nine Research. Uh, 
Les, Les Bears, Les Bears. Wilson Combat, you know, those type of 1911s. So this is a little bit out of our normal element and we still want to give it a completely fair and honest review and talk about how it performed and just talk about the features that are on this particular 1911. See some of the brass coming right back to me. The other thing I find is there's not much of a safety there. It's not much of a safety to use. So my thumb is kind of hunting for something to rest on. All right, real quick, let's go over some of the features on this 1911. I do want to point out something that I do not like about this 1911. I know Beretta Senior feels the same way. It's how loosely fit. The trigger is in the pistol. That's kind of a mess, you know what I mean, Brett Singer? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. That was my only complaint on the uh, standard manufacturing 1911 too, was that its trigger wasn't fit properly, wasn't perfect. Uh, this one kind of continues in that tradition. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just play. It's just pure play. Here's the trigger pull itself. You hit the wall brakes, probably a six pound trigger. Here's a reset. Descent. A little bit of movement. Brake. Not bad. So on this pistol you do have these checkered wood grips with the US logo on it which is really cool. You do have a serrated mainspring back here which is metal and it has that standard style profile with a lanyard on the back of it. The finish is a color case hardened finish. Looks pretty cool. You see right here it says model 1911A1 US Army. That's really cool. You have a wide spur hammer right here to be able to grab a hold of and cock one handed very easily like so. That was my favorite feature on the 1911. I actually really did like the hammer and I like the traction on top of the hammer so you can grab it and cock it easily. Yeah. Another ETM mag. Single hand. Sights are very minimal. Not bad. Definitely eating up the web in my hand with the uh, with the traditional GI style 1911, but not bad. Not much for sights either. Very minimal sights on this, guys. Beautiful to look at. You're up, young Beretta. Was shooting at the target that was already down. <laughs> I know.
It runs good, man. Yep. You know, it's been 100% reliable for me. You had that one stovepipe, but uh, runs real good. Last smack. Not bad. So just one little hang up, huh? Yeah. It's good to see that the Wilson mags, as expected, running 100%. Fantastic. All right, guys, back to the tabletop. All right, guys, showing off a couple of those Wilson Combat mags, too. Nicely finished. Eight rounder here. Heavy duty magazine. You can see the count through the window here. And we got steel base plates on them. So. The Wilson Combat Mags we continue to use. Back to the handgun uh, real quick as we get ready to finish this up. This auto ordnance handgun does come with one seven round magazine. It's this one right here. A lot of wear right here from the use in the one video. So can you see all that wear on the finish? So I don't know. Just wanted to show that off. It does come with one mag. So anytime you guys get a 1911, just try to make sure you get extra magazines to go with it and buy some quality magazines, either from Wilson or from Cobra, I think would be our two favorites, Trip Research uh, and Wilson Combat Mags. Anyway, back to the handgun. So it does have a pretty stiff MSRP, if you ask me, um, at $1,327. I mean, even if you can find it for a couple hundred dollars off, you're at $1,150 you know, or $1,130 or something like that. You know, the question comes down to, do you get something like this because you like the style and then of course the finish? And if you do, then that's fine. You can pay the extra money for it. But if you want a good basic 1911, I just keep on going back to that Magnum Research 1911 that we've already done several videos on and have continued to shoot absolutely perfect, which which comes in uh, closer to that $750 to $800 price range. Yeah, on the street. It's MSRP is 906 906 907 905 something like that. Right in the $900 range is the MSRP against an MSRP here of $1,300. I think the thing for me is this. This would be a great gun if it didn't have the couple problems we pointed out. And like, so if you were to buy this, in my opinion, it would need to be seen on site and messed with to make sure it doesn't have some of these issues that we've talked about in this video. Because like, if it didn't have these problems, it would be amazing GI style 1911. That looks fantastic. And one last thing to mention, at $1,300 for this one with this finish, you know, you're going up against um, another 1911 that I really like that's called the uh, Dan Wesson Vigil, which is around $1,200. And again, that's MSRP. So you're going to be able to find that gun for much less. And the Dan Wesson Vigil Commander is my carry gun. So these guns are very comparable in price. Just something to consider when you're making that kind of decision. Again, if you really like the GI style and the basic no frills except for this particular finish, you can get these auto ordinances and all kinds of different finishes. Matter of fact, they just came out with several very cool looking ones for 2020 coming up. So there's a whole bunch of stuff from auto ordinance that has to do with the finish and, and history of the United States and, and things like that that are going on. So check out the website on them because I think if you're interested in this pistol at all, you might find some other ones that don't come in this finish but actually has stuff to do with American history and stuff like that that you may find very, very interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review video. And if you're interested in this 1911 from Auto Ordnance or anything else available from Auto Ordnance, go ahead and check out their website and their products there. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the video. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and support us on Patreon, if you will, for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.